about your heritage and how how your heritage has influenced you as an artist. Yes. Um, so yes, yeah, so my parents are both from Afghanistan. They're from Kabul, born and raised there. Um, they left Afghanistan back in '79 when the Russian um, invaded Afghanistan, and years later I was born I was lucky I was lucky um, to be born in Normandy France um, but I was raised in um in a household that was very it was Afghanistan at home and and when I say Afghanistan I, it's the Afghanistan of my parents so it's probably the, maybe the images that you've seen in the 70s when it was very open-minded women were studying um, there was no like oppression from any side at, at the time that my parents were there uh, so I grew up in that, that environment at home, the culture. My parents were, did a very good job at um, teaching us about the culture and it was natural, uh, the language. Um, and then at school, it was, I mean, out, outside of the house, it was French. So we were French kids at school. Um, we, were, we had French friends. It was, very, it was a very good balance. So I never felt excluded from anything. I've... Um, it was just normal to be Afghan at home and French outside. Um, but today, then fast forward to, I think post high school, because 9-11 happened when I was in high school. And um, this is when people were starting to point at me and say like, oh, that's your country. Like no one knew where was Afghanistan before. Mostly I've been in elementary school, junior high, kids don't know Afghanistan is like never heard of. Uh, but 9-11, yes. Like, this is when we started hearing about it. Um, and it changed a little bit, but nothing it didn't change my way of living. I was just more aware of uh, what it meant to be from that country and how I had to, I was very proud of saying I was Afghan. I was never afraid of like saying I'm Afghan and people pointing at me and uh, being racist towards me or discriminating me in any ways because I wanted to show them that this is like a real Afghan person. Um, and then moving to the U.S., I think I really, I was in my early 20s, so it really helped me, because um, in the U.S., it's different than where I grew up in France. In France and Normandy, I grew up in a small town. Um, I was the only, yeah, I was, yeah, the only non-French in my, in my school, pretty much. Um, but here in the U.S., I was so diverse, people from all the countries, so it was easier to fully express who I was as an Afghan and a French girl. Um, and then it took me years and until today I'm trying to figure out what it really means. It's just, and that's what you see in my art and that's why my art has been helping me so much to express who I am. Um, and not, it's like who I am as a person, but also bringing some of my heritage in there and what it gave me. I, I always say that Afghanistan, because I've never been to Afghanistan, never been on that side of the world. But I always say that um, I was created, like Afghanistan created me and France raised me. And now in the US, I'm able to express myself. And that means sure. my art too. What was your journey? Like what brought you to essentially your practice and, and what, you, what you create? So my current practice, I would say that five years ago, I made a huge leap. I decided to, um, leave my job and um, just do art every day. And, um, and I think I had it inside of me before that, like I was always surrounded by art. Um, I was not actively always involved in art, but it was always part of like my schooling of what we were doing outside of school in France. It's like a mission in life. It's a passion. It's like, I, I have to do it every day. Um, if it's, it's, a, it's a very intimate practice which I love, but um, as intimate as it is, it connects me with so much more from the world. If it's people, but also like new concepts and yeah, new things that I discovered within myself that connects me with just like other, the collectors, the, the artists, or people like you that I'm talking to right now. So it's, it's, been, it's been a great journey so far. Who have been the artists who have inspired you? Um, currently living, I would say there's one woman artist that I've been following recently. Her name is Squeak Cornwatt, and she's a professor at, in, in Berkeley. Um, she's very, the reason why I like, I, I love her art. She's 
abstract. She has a lot of also wordings within there. And um, she's always touching into existential problems within her art. But what I love about her is that she's currently living and successful as an artist. So that's inspiring. Um, but I also love like the post-war American artists because um, I feel like they were very, they were able to shake the, the art world and break all the rules. Like being from France, like I have, that's, I'm very disciplined because I'm from France and I wanna follow all the rules, but it really helped me being an artist in America because here there's a culture of like anything is possible. And I think mm -hmm. the artists, like the site one believes and even like all the um the Lee, Lee Krasner and then the Pollock, like they were able to really break the rules and make it okay. Um so I really admire them and and Basquiat is always Basquiat I think is one of my favorites. So I always think about his work. I have his book on my table all the time. You've said that your paintings speak the words that you cannot express. What experience do you want someone to have engaging with one of your works? Um, that's always evolving. Um, and I think I want people, so when I paint, again, it's very, it's very personal. I'm, I still, I think I, I think I will always be in a quest of finding more about myself and what's around me and humanity and our purpose as as, as a humanity or, as, or personally. So I go deep personally, like I'm like completely in my painting, thinking about a concept that maybe I read about a few days before and I just keep researching by reading. It's very spiritual too, so it's linked together. But um, what, I what I want the viewer to, because it's abstract, it's very abstract. I want the viewer to be able to have that same intimate connection that I have with my art, like on their own, like wherever they are in life. Um, and lately what I've found, it's very, I love that because I'm, I'm painting from my soul and then and something, something that I was thinking of feeling and having someone else reaching out and telling via Instagram, telling me that they, they felt that without even me expressing it's a piece of abstract art. Mm -hmm. um, having that intimate connection with my art on the other side of the world or from wherever they are in this um, in front of the screen that's what like i love the most and and amazingly enough it's it's slowly coming out like when people are telling me like i felt this or i went through the and i had a few people this year actually who are going through the exact same and they were women all women going through the exact same issues not knowing each other all three of them reached out for the same piece of art so i had to make commission art for them because they were going through the exact same thing they saw one of my art and they really connected with and they needed to have it to heal themselves also so it's a healing process too as an artist and given your personal connection especially with what's happening in Afghanistan what is what is what is inspiring you and maybe inspire is too optimistic of a word given how the gravity of the situation but what is, what is unfolding for you in terms of your creative process and the things you're thinking about developing moving forward and, and how does that come into it? I think like it's, yeah, it's a very sad state of the world right now, mostly for women, um, but women are very resilient. And right now what I've been seeing, um, and I, I went to a march for Afghanistan and the, the leaders were all young women and I was very impressed by it. Their early 20s they were all like front row. They were the leaders or the speakers. And um, what do you see also on social media? It's mostly mainly women speaking up and um, they're not afraid of fighting and marching forward for their rights and making a difference. And that, that's how I see from my art, it, 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 it would be not easy, but I think it would be really sad if I would start painting from a depressing place or not like being like only expressing like the, the darkness of this world. We see it, we see how dark it is there. We have the medias for that. It's always like it's blasting on our phone every five seconds. We know how bad it is. But I think 
as an artist or even someone who's um, an activist, you have to really go from a place of like hope. It's it. We only we need a miracle, and this miracle is all of us getting together. Um, so if I'm making art, I don't want to make my presence uh, wherever it is, if it's on social media or in my studio. I don't want it to be another negative force. I want it to be positive and hopeful and bright. So I want to keep painting the way I paint. I'll, I'll try to raise awareness as much as I can. Um, but I think the intention behind it more than just like posting on my social media how bad it is in Afghanistan, I would rather show them like how I'm, I'm handling myself during a moment of crisis. And I'm not even like, I'm... I'm one of the blessed one. I mean, I live in San Diego. I was born and raised in France. I'm, my blood is Afghan. Like I, I, I feel it every morning when I wake up, mostly now. Um, I fall asleep when it is heavy, but um, even if, if not, it's not, as, it's not as bad for me at all. I'm the blessed one, I'm the lucky one, but I wanna show, I wanna keep hope and I wanna spread that. Gosh, you know, it's funny, I don't have a favorite color, but I know that pink makes me happy. Okay, so, so you've got, it, it, it's, pink is almost a verb for you. It move, moves you to do something, so. Yes, if I'm okay. stuck, pink. <laughs> um, something that sparks an emotion would be, I think in eighth grade, I mean, it, it was, I made um, this 3D, um, Mixed, mixed media piece about Afghanistan actually to present. And it was an art class. And I remember putting my heart into it and I loving it because I was doing research about my, my home country and, um, and also creating something artistic. What I regret is not keeping it because I was so proud of, I was very, very proud of it. Um, I remember it, but I don't have it anymore. <laughs> Right now, where, where I would go back, probably outside of France, um, probably Iceland. I love how raw it was and how it looked like another planet. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, and it was so natural, too, untouched. So, probably Iceland, yes. I haven't had many, thankfully, um, but I think because of the Californian fires, like we went to Sequoia um, not so long ago, and then with the smoke and the heat, it was, Sequoia itself is beautiful, but it was a very sad trip because like, you have COVID, you have the fire. So we were on our phone, like checking uh, the weather, the air quality, and then seeing like if COVID Delta, is Delta coming back, coming and coming to us. It was a, a two, three months ago. So that was pretty stressful. And I have a toddler. <laughs> I really admire Frida Kahlo, uh, what she stood for. Uh, her grit for painting and yeah, her passion for life to her, like you can feel it her art all the time. I don't, I think anybody could relate as a woman to Frida Kahlo, artists and not an artist, so. Uh, Afghan food, hands down, which um, is untouched, unknown. Um, and I, I didn't appreciate as much as I should have growing up, but now I, could, I think, yeah, this is, definitely my, my favorite food. It's a mix of, um, we're in Central Asia. So we have the dumplings. We have all the like the Eastern Asian food. And we also have all the kebab from the Middle East. So you get a nice fusion and the spices from India. So it's a nice fusion of everything. If you're in San Francisco, uh, we went to Kakari, it's a Greek restaurant. And they have this, uh, they, have, they have a Greek Sunday, which is like an, it's their Greek version of an American Sunday. It's a dessert, it's amazing. But again, I'm pregnant. So maybe it's because I was, <laughs> because I'm pregnant and I loved it so much. I, I, I think where and how would be visit galleries, visit local galleries, um, go online. Instagram has been great also, but sit down with art. Just grab like your favorite drink and just stare at art around you and go with your, what sparks something in you, like a strong connection and emotion towards the painting um, and do your research after. 
uh, about the artist if you don't know if you if you don't already know the artist um i think it's more magical if you connect with a piece of art and and then you ask the story about it or who's the artist and you see that you have a strong like pull toward that person and this and their story um that makes it more special i think it's like love at first sight almost or like something like a deep connection with this like creation from someone Thank you.